It's ironic how television show revivals are often hyped beyond measure despite rarely delivering the goods. We get so excited about revisiting familiar characters we forget to ask whether it's necessary to see them again in the first place. Now, there are times where reviving a series feels justified. If a stellar show had an anticlimactic ending, a bonus season gives the showrunners another chance to deliver a satisfactory conclusion. But more often than not, these do-overs make everything worse. Even though the creators probably had nothing but good intentions with these revivals, every one of them should have stayed dead. So with that in mind then, I'm Ellie with What Culture, and here are 10 TV shows that really should have stayed dead. Number 10. Only Fools and Horses This time next year will be millionaires, are the infamous words Del Boy said to his brother Rodney in almost every episode of Only Fools and Horses. But no matter what get-rich scheme the Trotter brothers came up with, it always backfired. But in the final episode of season 8, Del and Rodney made their dreams come true when they came into possession of a vast fortune through dumb luck. Because the BBC sitcom revolved around the Trotters always being down on their luck, this sort of ending could have come across as a complete cop-out. But thanks to the marvellous writing and phenomenal performances, this finale was a masterclass in comedy and the perfect send-off for the show, with the brothers literally walking off into the sunset. But due to popular demand, the Only Fools team returned five years later. Now, you might be thinking, how can this series continue if the Trotters are filthy rich? Well, simple. The season begins with Delboy and Rodney being poor again, utterly ruining the climax of season 8. Even though it was nice to see the gang back together again, this wasn't needed. The episodes themselves weren't classics either, giving the show a redundant second ending. Number 9. And Just Like That in 2013, a prequel series of Sex and the City was released called The Carrie Diaries. Having the story focus on Carrie Bradshaw as a high schooler in the 1980s was a smart move since it depicted a different, more vulnerable side to the character. But sadly, The Carrie Diaries got the chop after two seasons, despite receiving decent reviews. After a couple of spin-off movies and a third languishing for years in development hell, in 2021, Sarah Jessica Parker, Cynthia Nixon and Kristen Davis finally returned for a small screen Sex and the City revival titled And Just Like That. Because it was created by the original showrunner Darren Starr, everyone was expecting a return to form. Sadly, And Just Like That received negative reviews across the board. Even though most shows struggle to deal with touchy subjects like sex, religion or cancer, Sex and the City strived in this department. But here, the writers mishandle discussing diversity and social justice so badly it's almost comedic. The actors are clearly giving it their all, but it's not enough when the material they are given is this badly written and out of touch. Because And Just Like That only concluded recently, there is no word on whether or not a second season is in the works. But considering how god-awful this first season turned out, it would be wise to axe this series right now. Number 8. The X-Files the X-Files is a monster of the week sci-fi drama centering around two FBI agents with a will-they-won't-they they dynamic. When you phrase it like that, the series sounds pretty silly, but thanks to the actors' chemistry, a tight script and some genuinely unnerving moments, The X-Files became a global sensation that sci-fi fans couldn't get enough of. Until they did. Even though the first seven seasons were solid, season 8 and 9 were let down by rehashed ideas and the absence of Mulder. Because The X-Files didn't have a satisfying ending, you can understand why the showrunner Chris Carter brought it back after a 13-year gap. At first, the revival seemed promising. David Duchovny and Gillian Anderson's chemistry is so effortless it's like they've never been apart. It was also a nice touch to switch the characters' traits, so Mulder is the skeptic now while Scully has become the believer. But the show goes downhill when it starts focusing on the same alien conspiracy plot viewers grew tired of years ago. The episode centering around a monster transforming into a human was praised for its unique premise and clever writing, making critics wonder why the creators didn't try writing compelling material like this more often. Number 7. Roseanne There are few sitcoms that went off the rails as badly as Roseanne. 
Because the classic comedy centered on a struggling working class family, it didn't make sense when the blue collared Connors won the lottery, got kidnapped by terrorists, and had a prince falling for the titular character. When the last episode revealed all these events were cooked up by Roseanne after she lost her husband, it felt like the series was deliberately jumping the shark. So when the show returned after a 20 year hiatus, it felt like an opportunity to make amends. Despite a rocky start, the new season was better than many were expecting. If Roseanne maintained this standard, viewers could forget all about the reviled ending of the original series. But after the lead actress Roseanne Barr made some troublesome tweets, the show was abruptly cancelled. Knowing there was still money to be made, ABC launched a spin-off called The Connors, focusing on the family's struggles after Roseanne's unexpected death. But not only did Roseanne's absence impair the family dynamic, the storylines became confusing since key moments from the show were no longer acknowledged. Do you remember Jackie's marriage? Never happened. Remember Roseanne's son Dan? Doesn't exist anymore. Even though it was the right move to have a revival of Roseanne, the studio shouldn't have bothered with this dreadful spin-off. Number 6. 24 with its real-time structure, jaw-dropping twists, relentless action and heart-pounding cliffhangers, 24 became the biggest show on earth. It was also the first TV series to become the best-selling DVD, outselling every film out at the time. This feat is all the more impressive considering The Lord of the Rings came out during the same period. But after watching our hero Jack Bauer save the world from terrorists time and time again, 24 drew to a close in 2010. But when it was announced Bauer would return for the 12 part series 24 Live Another Day, viewers were worried the showrunners wouldn't be able to capture lightning in a bottle again. Surprisingly, the extra season was received positively and felt like a serviceable ending to the series. Sadly, the creators attempted to catch lightning in a bottle for the third time with another spin-off called 24 Legacy. Although it maintained the same structure as the original series, none of the main cast returned. Because it didn't try to reinvent itself in any way, Legacy felt more like a soulless rip-off rather than a continuation. To nobody's surprise, the show was canned after only 12 episodes. Number 5. Arrested Development in its prime, Arrested Development truly felt like the peak of comedy. Because of its masterful ensemble, hilarious writing and unrealistic commitment to brick jokes, it felt like a sin when Mitchell Hurwitz's comedy concluded after only three seasons. Despite the fact the rabid fanbase wanted more, it didn't seem feasible. Since the cast careers took off immediately after filming ended, it seemed like the actors were too busy to recommit to a TV series. But seven years later, Hurwitz performed the impossible and got the whole gang back together for two more seasons. However, viewers could immediately tell something was off. Most revivals don't work because they fail to recapture the essence of the original series. But for Arrested Development, season 4 tried way too hard. The writers pushed to make every subplot interconnect with an overarching storyline which came across as convoluted and messy. Because many performers were unavailable to film their scenes simultaneously, green screen was regularly used to accommodate this which was noticeably distracting. Unfortunately, the biggest problem with the last two seasons are the characters themselves. Although the Bluths are eccentric and manic, they still came across as relatable. But in the closing episodes, the characters became cartoonishly over the top. About 20 episodes revolves around Tobias organising a Fantastic Four musical. Lindsay and Lucille are revealed to be sisters for no reason, and in the last minute of the show, Buster is revealed to be a murderer. With storylines like this, there was no question Arrested Development had become a parody of itself. Number 4. The Bradys The Brady Bunch was such an icon of the 1960s, it was no surprise it was revived a number of times. The classic sitcom had multiple spin-offs, including The Brady Bunch Hour, The Brady Girls Get Married, and The Brady Brides. Even though every one of these revivals bombed, one that deserves special mention is The Bradys. So what made this show so infamous? It was a drama. Although the series had elements of comedy, you couldn't classify the Bradys as a sitcom due to its serious tone. Now there's nothing wrong with putting a new spin on an old property or tweaking the tone. Even though The Fresh Prince of Bel-Air worked perfectly as a comedy in the 1990s, the recent reboot's more dramatic edge works in its favour. But there are some sitcoms that cannot function as a drama, and The Brady Bunch is one of them. The original show was renowned for being uplifting, cheerful and corny. Whoever decided to revise the Bradys into a dramatisation obviously didn't understand what made the Brady Bunch work in the first place. Number 3. Scrubs Few comedies have made us laugh and cry like Scrubs. 
We giggled like school children at Kelso's put-downs and JD's fantasies. We bawled our eyes out when we learned the truth about Ben. Even though the best comedies struggle to stay consistent after a long run, Scrubs got stronger over time. So when season 8 ended with JD leaving Sacred Heart, you couldn't help choking up a little. But it wasn't over. The same year Scrubs supposedly ended, the creator Bill Lawrence developed a spin-off called Scrubs Med, which revolved around JD and his peers working in a new medical school. Against Lawrence's wishes, the studio rebranded this spin-off as Scrubs Season 9, hoping this would generate higher ratings. Because fans were expecting Season 9 to be more of the same, they were baffled to see only three principal characters returning. There was no Kelso, no Ted, no Janitor, JD, who was the protagonist of Scrubs, appeared in less than half the episodes. Fans were furious since it was blatant they were watching a spin-off that was deceptively advertised as a new series. Viewers were so unhappy with how Scrubs ended, many don't acknowledge the last season and perceive season 8 as the show's true conclusion. Number 2. The Twilight Zone the Twilight Zone's otherworldly tales and legendary twists have inspired some of the most famous movies ever, including Planet of the Apes, The Truman Show, The Sixth Sense, Poltergeist, and The Matrix. Even though most people shudder at the mention of remakes, bringing The Twilight Zone back sounds easy due to its anthological format. But after 1985 and 2002 reboots bombed, some wondered if the concept was too old-fashioned to work for a modern audience. But after the monumental success of the 2013 anthology drama Black Mirror, viewers knew The Twilight Zone still had potential. So when Get Out director Jordan Peele took the reins of the 2019 reboot, serving as writer, producer and narrator, it looked like things were in safe hands. But against all odds, the latest rendition of The Twilight Zone was a bland mess. In nearly every episode, the message was either too weak or too heavy-handed. This is a peculiar criticism since Peele is gifted at devising unsettling premises and creative social commentaries. What's also strange is how the stories are just not scary. Nightmare at 30,000 Feet, which is a remake of the iconic Nightmare at 20,000 Feet, contains none of the intensity of its predecessor. After watching one or two episodes of this shoddy remake, you'll be compelled to check out the old show again to see The Twilight Zone done right. Number 1. Dexter – New Blood after watching the adventures of our favourite serial-killing serial killer for eight years, Dexter came to an anticlimactic end in 2013. Because many people were dissatisfied with this conclusion, including the lead star Michael C. Hall, it was refreshing when we got a do-over in 2021 with a follow-up series, Dexter New Blood. After faking his death, Dexter Morgan starts a new life in Iron Lake, trying to hide his murderous urges. But after learning of a killing in the area, Dexter feels the dark passenger inside him screaming to be released again. Even though New Blood could have been a rehash, the head writer Clyde Phillips went out of his way to make this continuation feel like its own thing. With very few returning characters, a new environment and a focus on Dexter's relationship with his estranged son, Phillips breathed fresh life in the story. Although the show was always meant to be a single season, fans would have been left satisfied so long as the titular anti-hero received a well-deserved send-off. But considering the last episode has Dexter being murdered by his own son, viewers felt like this climax was an even bigger letdown. What's worse is that every character in this finale acts like a complete idiot. While incarcerated, Dexter goes against his code and kills an innocent guard, completely contradicting everything he stands for. Several plot threads are left unresolved, robbing the fans of receiving the closure they desperately needed and deserved. Even though there are a lot of awful TV show revivals, New Blood upset fans because it gave them false hope until the very end. And that concludes our list. If you can think of any other TV shows that really should have stayed dead, then do let us know in the comments below. And while you're there, don't forget to like and subscribe and tap that notification bell. Also, head over to Twitter and follow us there, and I can be found across various social medias just by searching Ellie Littlechild. I've been Ellie with What Culture. I hope you have a magical day, and I'll see you real soon.